We're going to look in God's Word. We can have a seat for a few minutes here. This year at our nights of worship, what we're doing is we are looking at songs in the Bible. And when you're thinking about songs in the Bible, at least for me, what I think of is I think of David. I think of David as just this wonderful songwriter that we look at the the Psalms, there's 150 Psalms and he's attributed, half of them are attributed to him. There was uh, ancient scrolls that were found in the caves of Qumran and they say that he he wrote 4,000 songs. David is a prolific songwriter. But tonight we're not gonna talk about David. Tonight, we are going to look at a guy who wrote a song hundreds of years before David's time. It's a guy by the name of Moses. Now, when I think of Moses, I don't think of songwriter. I think of Moses, I think of a baby that was placed in a basket in a river so that his life could be spared. I think of this this baby who was then found by Pharaoh's daughter and raised as an Egyptian who rose to the levels of authority in Egypt, who then in a moment of anger, as he was protecting one of his Hebrew people, he committed murder to then go run and hide for 40 years in Midian. When I think of Moses, I think of this guy who was then pulled out of hiding, instructed by God to go to Pharaoh and free God's people. I think of a man who wasn't sure of himself, who didn't feel like he had what it took to do this job, who ultimately then negotiated with Pharaoh with a little help from God and 10 plagues, to then free his people from slavery in Egypt. When I think of Moses, I think of the man who parted the Red Sea. I think of the man who came down from Mount Sinai with the 10 commandments. I think of the man who led his people out of Egypt toward the promised land to be stopped just short of entering the promised land himself. When I think of Moses, I don't think songwriter. But we know of at least three songs that Moses wrote. One was just as his people crossed the Red Sea. It's found in Exodus 15. Another one called the the Song of Moses in the wilderness is found in Psalm 90. And the one that we're going to look at today, and it's even an interesting placement of it, it's found in Deuteronomy 32. We're going to look at Deuteronomy 32 today, and it's a fairly lengthy chapter of the Bible. We're not going to read through it all. I went through it and read it, and it took me about eight minutes, and I have ten minutes left, so we're not reading through it all. But I want to take a few little pieces out of this because I absolutely know that God wants to speak to each of us tonight. He's been speaking to me a lot in preparation, and I know that he has something for you today. Would you pray as we invite him to speak to us? Heavenly Father, as always, when we gather, Lord, it is my prayer that you would change our lives, that you would open our eyes to see a new perspective, that you would Show us each individually something that we, we need to hear from you today. We invite you into this time, praying that you will indeed change lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to read the first few verses, starting in verse 1. It says, listen, you heavens, and I will speak. Hear, you earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew. Like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect. And all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong. Upright and just is he. 
There's a lot in those four verses that we could dig apart, and that could take a whole lot longer than the few minutes that we have here. But what I love in that is the idea that God is faithful and God is just. The God of Moses' time, the, the God of Adam and Eve, the God of David, the God of the time that Jesus was around, and the God that we have today is the same. Our God is faithful. Our God is not changing. He's there. You know, we just sang about, so you're going to fail now? And the answer is no. Like, why would he fail now? He didn't fail before, and he's not going to fail now because our God is faithful. And he's the same through generations. And our God is just. He's equitable. He's fair. He demands justice. This is our God. This is the God of Moses, the God that he sung this song to. And this is the God that today we worship. This is the God that we encounter. This is the God that we follow. You move forward a little bit to, to verse 15. And it takes a little bit of a shift, a little bit of a turn. We read, they abandoned the God who made them and rejected the rock, their savior. They made him jealous with their foreign gods and angered him with their detestable idols. They sacrificed to false gods, which are not God. Gods they had not known. Gods that recently appeared. Gods your ancestors did not fear. You deserted the rock who fathered you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. I think it's so easy for us to read God's word and especially something like this that was just thousands and thousands of years ago. It's easy to sit in judgment. It's easy to look at those people and say, yeah, you just saw God come through. You just saw God free you from slavery. You just saw God do miracle after miracle after miracle. And now you've abandoned him and you're doing your own thing. I honestly believe that there's a danger in that. There's a danger in us saying it's, it's them at that time and not looking at ourselves. Because the truth of the matter is that we all fall short. Romans 3.23, so much more close to our time than this was, Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, writes, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If we dare today to say it's not us, it's them, we miss out. It's important for us to understand that God is faithful and God is just. It's important for us to recognize that each and every one of us fall short. We'll talk about in a little bit what that means because it's so important in our setting to understand our need for a Savior. If we continue on into verse 19, we read, The Lord saw this and rejected them because he was angered by his sons and daughters. I will hide my face from them, he said, and see what their end will be. For they are a perverse generation, children who are unfaithful. They made me jealous by what is no God and angered me with their worthless idols. I will make them envious by those who are not a people. I will make them angry by a nation that has no understanding. There are absolutely consequences to sin. We've got to get that. We all sin. We all fall short. The title of this message is A Song of Refreshing honesty. Because the truth is when we can get to this place where we are truly honest, where we are honest with ourselves, we're honest with each other, and we're honest with God to understand that we have fallen short. We recognize our sin, but we also have to recognize that our sin has consequences. Now, many of you know my story. My story is filled with many, many years of drug and alcohol abuse. That during the times that I was using, I had a lot of things go wrong in my life. I had immediate consequences to what happened in my life. 
Now, we don't need to get into all those consequences today, but, but just know they weren't good. There were times when I didn't have freedom because of my choices. There were times when my relationships were completely fractured and I was alienated in my entire family where people couldn't trust me because of the way I lived. Now, I've been clean and sober for a long time, but there may be consequences still down the road. I don't know what damage I did to my body and what's going to happen to me down the road. I can hope that there isn't anything, but sometimes we just don't know. I think often in our lives, it's easier when the consequences are immediate. Because sometimes when we don't see those consequences, we kind of think we got away with it. We kind of think, like, maybe there is no consequence to this one. Maybe I'm good to go. Maybe I didn't get caught at that thing at work and I'm still employed. You know, maybe my spouse doesn't know what I did there. But the reality is, that ultimately there are consequences to our sin. And we've got to be honest about that. I'm going to fast forward to the the end of this song. We're going to go to verse 45. When Moses finished reciting all these words to to all Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all the words I have solemnly declared to you this day so that you may command your children to obey carefully all the words of this law. They are not just idle words for you. They are your life. The words that Moses had in this song for the nation of Israel, the rest of the words that we find in this book, God's word for us. These are not just words. These are words for our life. Words to live by and to direct us. God is faithful and God is just. We, on the other hand, are unfaithful. We sin. We fall short. That sin has consequences. Some some immediate, some long-term, some temporal in this world, some for all eternity if we don't get forgiveness through Jesus. One of my favorite passages in all the Bible is Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God, our faithful God and our just God, he wants us to come back to him. He wants us to to have a conversation of refreshing honesty. To say, God, I have fallen short. God, I haven't lived the way you want me to live. God, I confess my sins. And I turn back to you. 1 John 1.8 says, If we claim to be without sin... We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. I think most people would say that they sin. They go, oh, that's not me. I don't ever claim to be without sin. But I actually think there's a little bit of nuance to that. I think if we hide or don't admit or don't confess certain sins, I believe it's the same thing. I believe that we indeed deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But as God is faithful and God is just, we read in the next verse, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's what God wants from us. And the reality is that this is new each and every day. And the fact is you don't have to wait till the next morning. Here and now, right now, tonight, whether you're here on campus or you're at home or you're in a hotel room somewhere on a business trip or you're watching this down the line after the fact, right here and right now is an opportunity to have a refreshing, honest conversation with God. To admit the areas where you've fallen short, to confess those to God, to to ask for his forgiveness. We are going to have a time of communion.
which is absolutely the perfect time for us to do this. We often look at 1 Corinthians and what Paul says there about communion. And it says here, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. Jesus took the bread at the dinner table with his disciples. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. He broke the bread and he passed it around. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And then after that, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, which was poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Every time you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. When I'm truly being honest with myself and with God, when I'm reflecting upon how I've fallen short and what I haven't done the way I need to, this takes on a whole new meaning. I think so often in my life, I think I'm doing just fine. I think I've done what I need to do. And I'm a pretty good guy. And the truth is, when I believe that, when I approach life that way, I'm basically saying, I don't need a savior. I don't need Jesus. I didn't need him to die for my sins, to have his body broken and his blood shed for me because I'm doing all right. But if I'm being honest, if I'm not saying I'm without sin or even specific sins, then all of a sudden, there's a deeper meaning to this. Paul writes in verse 28 of 1 Corinthians 11, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink the cup. I want to invite you right now to spend a few minutes as the worship team is leading and playing some music to, to examine yourselves, to take this time to connect with God, to ask God to reveal to you as an individual those areas in your life that maybe you've fallen short in. No, nah, not maybe, that you have fallen short in. Take those sins, those areas of shortcoming and give them to God. Ask for help, ask for forgiveness. Be honest with God. Be honest with yourself. Then when you feel led, when you feel the time is right, we encourage you to go to one of the four tables that are here. If you're at home, we encourage you as well to, to grab something that you can use to represent God's body and his blood broken and shed for you. We'll give a few minutes for that time and then then we're going to come back together and we're going to sing some more songs. I think with a renewed spirit and understanding of God is faithful and God is just and he's, he's purifying us. He's making us clean and he's making us new. I want to pray and then I'll invite you to that time of reflection. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness and your justice and your love. So great that you sent Jesus to have his body broken and his blood shed for me and for every other person in your shop. Lord, you want everyone on this planet to know you and to come to faith in Jesus and then to live it out. Lord, we invite you. I invite you on behalf of everybody listening Would you show us those areas where we've fallen short? Would you stir in our hearts a a need to confess it, to ask for your forgiveness, and at least in that area of our life to start anew? Speak to us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.